Welcome back to the Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI. Many of you who listen to this show know that it is very rare that a Democrat is actually brave enough to come on the show, which is why we laud praise on them when they are that brave. Joining me now on the KVI studio line, four-term member of the California legislature, recently dubbed Newsmax's token Democrat, or as we say, the only Democrat brave enough to go on Newsmax, Mike Gatto. Thank you so much for being with us today, buddy. Oh, it's great to be here. It's such a pleasure. So you and I are often on panels on Newsmax, and I thought something you said the other day was absolutely fascinating. We were on together on Tuesday, and we were talking about the Hunter Biden investigation, and you made a comparison to Richard Nixon in 1968 with regard to what's going on with people backing Joe Biden. Can you explain that for us? Yeah, it's something that I like to call the Democrats' potential 1968 problem, and what that refers to, of course, is... Um, you know, a time where you had a president in the White House who was a little tired. Um, in that case, it was LBJ. And, uh, you know, there were some scandals. In LBJ's uh, time, it was, you know, the Vietnam War and um, certain other financial things with the, uh, the administration. And then, you know, of course, he surprised the country by very, very late in the primary season, just without much fanfare, announcing that he was not going to run for re-election. And that triggered a very divisive primary, and that ushered in Richard Nixon into the White House. I got to say, I thought that was an absolutely brilliant comparison. It's one of those things that I go, damn, why did that guy think of that before I did? I mean, that's really, <laughs> it's well, very, very, very apt. You know, sometimes when the other person on the panel goes before, you're like, man, that was brilliant. I should have said that. <laughs> what am I going to say that's going to measure up to that? So in looking at that and translating it to modern day, what's the go, no-go point for a Joe Biden presidential run? Well, when I start thinking as a Democrat, right, and I think of nightmare scenarios for the Democratic Party, um, it could be something that is, as you noted in the intro, it could be something that's scandal driven. It could be that something comes out about um, Hunter Biden that is um, just very, very clear, and it's hard for even the president's defenders to defend him. And then that triggers, um, you know, very, very big calls for Biden to withdraw. It could be health related. I mean, as I said on air, you know, um, I do not wish well, or I do not wish ill on anybody and most certainly not the president of the United States. But, you know, he is old and he's had some missteps literally. And, um, you know, if he has a health crisis uh, later this year, that could also force a withdrawal. I mean, I think anything past Christmas in the modern primary world is very, very late. Okay, so your go, no go would be winter break, Christmas, New Year's time of this coming year. Is that about right? Yes, precisely. I think anything past, you know, December of this year. I mean, you, you want, in theory, to have a primary season that thoroughly vets the candidates. It gives the uh, the nation the chance to hear from diverse voices within a party, right? And um, and I just do think it's just a little too late if anything happens past uh, the end of 2023. We're talking with Mike Gatto, who's a four-term California member of the California legislature. And when you were in the legislature, I assume you had something to do with Governor Gavin Newsom or have since. So it's obvious that he's kind of trying to position himself as the, well, it's not going to be Kamala Harris. It's going to be Gavin Newsom. And here you go, sir, step up to the plate. But looking at what California is like right now and from whatever experience you had with him, is that somebody that would have your support? Well, I can tell you, I do know Governor Gavin Newsom very well. Um, it's really fascinating because I think, you know, people who know him, um, he is a little different behind the scenes than his public persona. Um, but I think that probably applies to all of us. Um, and it certainly applies to all politicians. He is a very, very gifted politician. I mean, you look at the issues for the Democratic Party that he was so far in advance on, where he, he really, you know, uh, he, he was he was uh, he had tremendous vision within the Democratic Party to speak up for various issues before anybody else was. Uh, however, I have said before, as much as I respect him, that I do not think the country would welcome his candidacy in 2024. And uh, and I'm not sure that they'd welcome it in 2028 either. I think he's going to have a hard time if he wants to be president. So then let's play fantasy baseball here for a minute or fantasy football, whatever your poison is. OK, so let's do that. Who would be your top picks if Joe Biden decides he's not going to run? Gosh, I mean, <laughs> you know, a party to be named later. Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's I mean, look, I I can read polls. Right. And I I, I know that, um, you know, the, the names that most people are talking about. Um, 
just doesn't seem that the polls show that there would be enough support to get things done in November of 2024. Um, the irony, you know, when we talk about the 1968 problem is that there's a Kennedy on the ballot again, too, which is just crazy if you, you know, if you like the comparison. Uh, but I mean, you know, I think Democrats would need to nominate somebody who is somewhat boring and somebody, frankly, who is not from California, because, you know, we're a very polarizing state. Um, you got to know yourself. And <laughs> I've heard that the rest of the country doesn't like us too much. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, especially here in Washington, because it seems like all the bad California ideas managed to make their way up here. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Mike Gatto four terms in the California legislature, as we call him Newsmax's token Democrat. But that's not really nice. It's really one of the few Democrats who's brave enough to go on Newsmax. So, Mike, looking at the Republican field for a minute, which candidate do you think the Democrats most want to be against? Oh, my gosh. I mean, Democrats would love it for Republicans to nominate Mr. Trump again. Um, then, you know, all the simultaneous prosecutions and, you know, all the um, I mean, look, a, a replay of 20, 2020 is the base case for most people here. And obviously, uh, Mr. Biden won that election. So so I've said before and I'll say it again, the Democrats love the specter of a Trump candidacy. They fear the specter of a DeSantis candidacy. So then the question is, if they love it so much, are they concerned with the comparison you made to 1968? Are you concerned about a repeat not of 2020, but of 2016, where people didn't like Hillary Clinton so much they stayed home? And could that happen with Joe Biden against Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis? Yeah, I mean, I think it could. Right. I mean, that's that's where, you know, the the nuance really exists. I mean, as much as we want to predict things um, and as much as the base case is probably still that these two heavyweights are the nominees, you know, there is some shade around the edges. Right. What's the economy doing? Um, how bad is Biden's health? Has he had any major gas? What comes out on Hunter Biden? You know, is does Trump get prosecuted? Is he running from a jail cell? Can he go to rallies? I mean, it is such a mess. And, you know, it's interesting, Ari, because, you know, I just got back from overseas and, and uh, most people asked me when I was overseas, they said something to the equivalent of like, gosh, there's 400 million Americans and this is the best you can do. And I mean, look, I, I know there's people who listen to your show who love Mr. Trump and I know a lot of my friends who love Mr. Biden. But at some point, don't we have to ask ourselves that as Americans? Well, I think a lot of people are asking themselves right now, when you see Trump on stage, you don't really go, oh, that guy's, you know, pushing, you know, in his he's not having senior moments or anything like that. You go, this guy seems young and vibrant. People forget how old he is. But at the same time, why is it every single politician we have is pushing 80? Why is it every single politician right. we have is in that bracket? And you got to start asking yourself a question. Yes. Why do we keep going back to the same pool of people, especially when so many of the people in that pool have screwed us so many times before? Look at people like, I mean, some of the people have benefited off the American people for years. And I could list a whole bunch of Democrats. I could list a whole bunch of Republicans. But why do we keep dipping into that well? It is very weird. I mean, we are a very bright country. There's a lot of energy and a lot of great ideas. And, you know, you also have to argue that there were times in our past where we were way more united than we are now. Um, you know, Ronald Reagan's presidency. You could even argue Bill Clinton's presidency, the first term. Our country was relatively united and both parties pulled together on a few issues. I'd love to see that. Let's <laughs> return to that. I'd love an inspiring, you know, relative newcomer to come into politics and unite the country again. The sad thing is I've been waiting for that for a mighty, mighty long time, Ari, and uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen in the near future. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a big compliment, even though we disagree on the Reagan thing, because I think he was one of the most bully presidents we had. But OK, I, I see where you're coming from with the unity thing. You're on my show. You're on Newsmax. And I wish there were more people like you. And I know that if any if ever CNN or MSNBC called me, of course, I'd say I'd go on the show. I'd love to go on The View and hang out with Whoopi Goldberg. But, you know, I think that you doing this kind of stuff is a huge step in the right direction. And likewise, I'd love to, I, I love debating you. I love discussing everything. And I'd love to see you on CNN. I think you'd, you'd be a tough opponent and it'd be really interesting television. Thanks a lot, buddy. That means a lot. Mike Gatto, four terms he served in the California legislature, and he is one of the Democrats who is brave enough to come and debate me on Newsmax and plenty of other shows. You can catch him over on Twitter at Mike Gatto. That's G-A-T-T-O. Thank you so much for joining us today, and you have a wonderful weekend. You too, Ari. We got a whole lot more to discuss as the show continues. You're listening to The Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI.